Morning, guys. Happy New Year. All muscle. I'll show you what I'm working on today. Today I'll be working on the wife's car. Uh, she has this uh, E500. This is a 211 Mercedes chassis. That's an older body. This one's a 2003. Uh, but I keep it around because it's uh, actually a damn good car. And I can't get much for it. They don't go for much, so uh, it's not really worth me selling it. But uh, it's definitely, uh, you know, decent still to drive around. So, anyways, <clears throat> this is what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, we've got a replacement upper control arm. Uh, this is what's uh, called a uh, thrust or torque arm. And then uh, right next to that, I've got a lower control arm. And this is your outer tie rod. And, of course, the inner tie rod right next to that. And then I have a lower ball joint. So uh, if you have a uh, 211 Mercedes at some point, and all of them do, uh, at some point you'll start noticing uh, squeaks, rattles, uh, little clunking noises in the, in, the, uh, in the suspension. And when you do notice that, uh, you'll have most likely uh, what a lot of people uh, actually talk about is this torque arm and a lot of them just replace a lot of people will just replace this torque arm uh, but I found a kit that was inclusive with all these uh, you know the, all these all these items I've got one two three four five six it was a 12 piece kit because obviously on the other side you would have the same amount of pieces so uh, this one here <coughs> obviously your your upper your upper control arm it's just it's located right up here up on the top that's the upper control arm you get in here uh, this uh, is your lower control arm we'll be replacing that uh, also uh, your your torque arm the one I talked about here just uh, what most people usually replace it's gonna be this arm here uh, this is your torque arm and then uh, your tie rod this is your outer and then your inner is obviously uh, inner and it's back it's back in here so we'll be replacing all those parts there uh, and then we'll see uh, how she does. So I'm gonna get to work on this and if I uh, notice anything that's gonna be uh, any type of uh, problem or difficulty, uh, any tips that I might have, I'll take a secondary video, let you guys know what I did. Uh, these actually, uh, also I'm gonna be talking, I'm gonna make another video on this, but uh, these are the airbags. These are a very common problem. Uh, when I bought the car, they had just been replaced uh, these are the R not units. These are not the factory. <clears throat> Those are not the factory uh, units. The Bilstein or Bilstein. I'm not sure how uh, it's said properly, but I say Bilstein really. Uh, the Bilstein is the original piece that goes in here. Uh, these had just been replaced uh, not too long back when I uh, initially bought the car. I think I bought it about four years ago. So I know the uh, Bilsteins, the ones that came factory the last 10, 11 years. Uh, that's in my experience. I bought uh, a few of these 211 chassis. As you, see, as you can see, I've got one here. And this is the video I'm going to be making uh, on the air shocks. Uh, the aromatic suspension on these cars goes faulty. And they're uh, really expensive to replace. And so a lot of people just get rid of them cheap. And that's where I come in. But uh, anyways, uh, this, is another, this is another 211 chassis. This is a 550. Uh, the uh, motor is different on this one. This one's a 500. It's the old uh, style 5.0 motor, which is extremely reliable. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good solid motor. Uh, on these motors here, they're a little bit more, uh, uh, what, what would I say, technologically, technologically advanced. They're a little more advanced, so they, they tend to have uh, a few more problems. Uh, just uh, recently, I had to do the uh, cam the cam sensors, the cam magnets on this car, and it brought it back to life, but it was just something that just wasn't even implemented on, on these, and you know, never had an issue with, uh, with anything as far as the motor is concerned on this car. Uh, that's why I keep it around, it just, it just runs. So anyways, uh, I'm gonna get to work on this, and uh, I'll get back to you on the next, uh, on the next uh, video here, uh, and I'll make a, uh, obviously I'll make a, uh, another video on this here that, you know, showing any tips or tricks that I might I might have for you uh, in doing this job. All right, guys.
Hey guys, we're back on this uh, E500. Uh, we uh, did a complete front end suspension uh, rebuild, per se. Uh, let me show you some of the old parts. All right, so here are the old parts. Uh, I believe I already showed you the uh, new ones. Uh, this is your lower control arm. The ones we pulled off this car didn't look too bad. A lot of the uh, a lot of the bushings weren't. Uh, they were starting to go in some areas. Uh, there's cracks and whatnot around the uh, mounting point. Uh, the ball joints, the joints were actually a little spent. They were tired. Uh, there's the upper control arm. This ball joint just everywhere. Uh, the bushings didn't seem too bad on the upper control arms though. Uh, the torque arm, however, uh, was the worst of all. I don't know if you can see any of this here, but. Yeah, see it's uh, got that cut right down the center of the uh, mounting area there. And then of course the uh, ball joints, the ball joints were pretty spent on those. Uh, so anyways, uh, these are the old parts. And what was going on is every time you would uh, steer or hit a driveway uh, or any kind of bump in the road, you'd hear a bunch of clacking and, and uh, noise and whatnot. Uh, so anyways, we took care of that. Uh, let me show you here. Uh, this upper control arm, uh, one of the uh, one of the items that I wanted to uh, mention because I did this on accident. So just to uh, uh, just to let you guys know, uh, this is your uh, ride height. This is your level sensor uh, for the aromatic. That's what tells the car to go up and down. Uh, if uh, on this side I did uh, I did it just fine, but I wasn't paying attention on the other side. And this this lever, uh, you can actually flip it, and it'll go to the back and. Uh, give you an incorrect reading. So uh, what was going on is my uh, cluster uh, lit up red and it told me I had a critical uh, ride height uh, where the airbag was pumped all the way up and the car was still reading that it was too low because it was getting an inaccurate uh, reading from this level sensor. So when I when I noticed that, I, I didn't finish up till late last night and I was just trying to get it back together. But uh, yeah, this, uh, this, this lever will go back into its original place uh, in the opposite direction, so be careful with that. Uh, but everything else was pretty straightforward. Uh, as you can see, you got the uh, these uh, these nuts here. Are actually, the uh, the locking style, uh, new ball joint on there. Uh, the, let me show you the torque arm. The torque arm, no problems with that. I did have to remove I did have to remove the dust shields here, uh, and this uh, basically is just consists of a bunch of these 10 millimeter plastic uh, plastic. Uh, uh, nuts, uh, nylon style nuts. You take those both out. Uh, it just, it was very helpful. Uh, also, uh, obviously remove the caliper. I did remove the complete uh, spindle assembly in order to press in, uh, in order to press in the lower ball joint. Uh, the lower ball joint is uh, this guy right here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but he goes down uh, and through here. Uh, there's the torque arm. There's a joint on that. Uh, that, uh, none of that was, uh, uh, was uh, tough at all. Uh, the only part, obviously, pressing in the ball joint, uh, we have a uh, old style C C clamp press, and that that took uh, that took a little bit of effort. Uh, but as you start taking this apart, uh, I also another tool that I did not have was this uh, this larger size E Torx. I didn't ha quite have that E Torx, uh, but what I found was a 14 millimeter uh, 12 point wrench will hold that just fine. Uh, as you ratchet the other side, uh, I believe with the 21 millimeter. Uh, so that uh, that's, that's a couple tips there. Uh, also, uh, the uh, you might find that your car will need an alignment, uh, or at least the steering wheel set straight. Uh, right now, I'm in the process of uh, doing the just setting the steering wheel straight because the alignment uh, drove it, and the car seemed to be aligned just fine. Uh, but the steering wheel was just off to one side, so I'm setting that up. Uh, in order to set that up, uh, you have to uh, uh, fiddle with these tie rods and i'm not going to go into that uh, but basically uh, it's just loosening up this this nut here uh, and pushing this one uh, out and the other one in or vice versa you can work on that uh, or you could check out some videos there's a bunch of videos on that uh, on you know separate channels but anyways uh, you'll find that you might need an alignment and i think that's uh, that's pretty much it uh, for right now. I mean, uh, I drove the car. There's not a there's not a sound coming out of the, the front end suspension at all. Uh, it feels a lot more stiff, a lot more solid. So it's actually one way to uh, 
uh, to get a you know more enjoyable ride out of your Mercedes. Uh, you know, I, you can you know a lot of people let those go. I mean, I've gotten to these cars a lot, and uh, they always seem to have that uh, that front end noise. So even this one has it's just starting to go on the front end here. I just barely starting to hear it, but uh, this one's got a lot less miles on it. So, anyways, uh, I think that's a wrap on this one uh, for now. So if you have any questions, uh, this kit. Uh, did come complete and it was uh, it was a 12 piece kit. The only thing that I did not install uh, was the inner and outer tie rods and I didn't need the inner and outer tie rods. And I believe if I was going to get an alignment, I'm just going to have them do them. But uh, inner and outer tie rods. Actually, this is the uh, company. Let me show you. This is the company that uh, that uh, I got all the parts from. Uh, no, I just got these online on eBay. Uh, it's some uh, crazy German uh, spelling. I can't. I can't even pronounce that. But it looks uh, looks German to me. So, anyways, uh, that's your uh, that's your outer tie rod, uh, your inner tie rod. Uh, I didn't use these again because I, uh, I I didn't feel there was any play. I mean, I probably could have used the outer one just for the ball joint, uh, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't want. To, I was hoping not to mess with the uh, uh, with the steering uh, angle. So uh, now that there is. Uh, steering angle that I'm playing with I might go ahead and replace those but yeah this uh, this just just for this ball joint to be a little stiffer uh, on your steering but other than that uh, the there's no play in my steering uh, inner or outer tie rods uh, and they felt just fine but this kit here I believe was I don't want to say it was a little over four hundred dollars like four four sixty ish maybe mid four hundreds four sixty is what I believe I paid for it and it came with all these uh, all these parts now I'm probably gonna keep these parts uh, just because uh, a cheaper route to go uh, on the next one would be just to press out these bushings on all these uh, uh, components and you can buy these bushings all individually and separately so there's no damage to the actual component the wear is only on the bushings and the ball joints so if I if I wanted to do another set for that car for example I can buy all the stuff uh, and press all this stuff out and have it all ready uh, to go so that way when I do put the uh, parts or, or when I go to do the job I have everything ready to go and I don't have to uh, sit there and wait on anything but yeah these these bushings are all sold individually and you can get you know you can get them done much cheaper you can get this job done much cheaper than the 460 that I mentioned if you just buy all the bushings individually and sit there and press them out now it is more time consuming so uh, I don't know what you value your time at and if you value your time at uh, you know I don't know 50 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour, 100 bucks an hour, uh, you might find that spending the 460 on, on getting all the parts already pre-done uh, and with the bushings already included uh, actually might be uh, savings to you. So uh, you figure that out. And as of uh, right now, uh, we're gonna get going and get this uh, buttoned up. Uh, one more thing I did wanna mention is when you do, when you do, uh, when you do, before you, uh, before you tighten up any of these upper control arm bolts, these lower control arm bolts, uh, or the torque thrust arm, uh, you wanna basically put all the bolts in and then uh, load the suspension as I have it here now. The suspension is loaded on, uh, you know, basically on the weight of the car. And before you tighten anything up, you wanna load the suspension up. That's definitely something that you wanna do. And one thing that I did have is this uh, scan tool. Let me see here. Uh, this scan tool was allowing me to basically go under suspension here and let's switch this ignition on. This is the scan pad. Uh, Launch makes this. It's a uh, it's your Chinese uh, deal, but uh, it works fine. Uh, anyways, it would it would let me lower and lift each uh, each individual airbag, which was actually very uh, very helpful. See here, I can. Uh, I can uh, lift front left, lower front left, and then I can do all that to different uh, to different uh, uh, corners. So uh, what uh, what that was helpful in was it would take pressure off the airbag uh, and uh, release and lower pressure as I as I saw that I needed it. Now I did not remove, I did not actually I did this job without removing uh, the front strut. All I did was uh, kind of uh, loosen up the top bolts. I loosened up the top three nuts up here. And then I was able to jiggle it around just enough for me to fit the wrenches that I had uh, inside here, believe it or not. So I did not actually remove 
uh, the uh, air strut, air spring. So, anyways, if that helps you out, uh, you know, uh, doing your vehicle, uh, that's uh, that's what my intention is. So, uh, you know, uh, this is the this is this car has got 160 on it, and we just drive it around. Uh, there's nothing special about it. It's just something that uh, you know gets me to the store and back. And if it gets a ding in the parking lot, you know, who gives a shit? Uh, it's an older car, and it's it's uh, I like it for what it's for, and I just you know keep it maintained in that respect. So. Anyways, you guys have fun, and I hope this helps you guys out. Take care.